For Elif Yamangil, food has always been a central part of her life. Growing up abroad in Turkey, meals connected her busy family together around the kitchen table, and the sweet indulgences here and there were something to look forward to. Yamangil has always had a sweet tooth, and living in Turkey, desserts such as baklava, Turkish delight, and fresh apricots and figs were commonplace. While Yamangil loved her home country, she wanted to experience more of the world, so she studied hard in order to get into a good college and went onwards from there. I did pretty well in college. I got into a PhD program at Harvard, and it came with a scholarship, so my family didn't have the means to send me to Harvard, but that way I just kind of like made it out of Turkey and ended up in this amazing Cambridge, Massachusetts environment. Yamangil spent seven years in Cambridge doing research and publishing papers and earned her PhD in computer science. I've always worked out a lot and exercised, but I don't think I ate the best. I wasn't that mindful of how much sugar makes me crash in the afternoon, how much sugar makes me really jittery first thing in the morning, etc. So um, I think during my PhD, I didn't really have means to like do a lot of baking back then, but I started thinking more about like my diet. After wrapping up her PhD at Harvard, she accepted an engineering role at Google and today has her hands full juggling work, being a new mom to a toddler, and managing her growing baking blog, Plenty Sweet, which features easy-to-make, low-calorie and low-sugar desserts. Among the recipes are one-bowl vegan brownies with a gooey center and melted chocolate chips on top or easy blueberry oatmeal sheet pancakes that round out at 100 calories and 4 grams of sugar per serving. I'm basically kind of a lazy baker. I will not go and shop for rare ingredients unless I really, really want to make something. It kind of annoys me a little bit when I see really tasty-looking brownies, but then there's a sheet of 20 ingredients and things you have to measure really precisely, like half a teaspoon of this or a tablespoon and a half of that. I just want people to have basic one-fourth cup measurement and just dump three, four, five things into a bowl, mix it, bake it. It tastes great. All of her handcrafted recipes are under 200 calories per serving and are low in sugar, often using fruits instead of loads of added sugar to sweeten the treat. Yamangil also switches out traditional fillers for healthier alternatives like whole wheat flour, nut butters, applesauce, plain Greek yogurt, or sweet potatoes to add in more protein and fiber, keeping you fuller for longer. We basically have a really balanced snack, like a snack that doesn't necessarily have to give us a huge insulin spike and a crash, so you can eat a cookie with your breakfast yogurt or milk and not necessarily feel really terrible at 10.30, 11 a.m. because it has all this good nutrition from the fruit and the vegetable and not so much added sugar and some fiber, some protein, some healthy fats to keep us satiated. And the math whiz in her is always calculating the breakdown of calories and nutritional content in each recipe. I'm always churning numbers in my head thinking about recipes and their nutritional info and how much sugar they have, how many calories, how much protein, how much fiber. Yamangil isn't the only cook to take on this quest to redefine recipes and cut sugar. Jennifer Tyler Lee is an acclaimed cookbook author and recently co-authored a cookbook, Half the Sugar, All the Love. She says that on average, Americans are consuming three times more sugar than the recommended daily limit. Common grocery items such as bread, yogurt, breakfast bars, and granola are all sneaky places where sugar can hide. Even if you check nutritional labels, it can still be confusing to understand the ingredient breakdown, especially when companies switch out granulated sugar for sugar substitutes like stevia. Stevia is 200 to 400 times sweeter than sugar. And when you consume it, it tells the sweet center in your brain that sugar is coming. But when your blood glucose level doesn't go up with it, your body gets confused and you may end up craving more sugar as a result of it. So really this takes us back to the answer is fiber-rich 
fruits and vegetables are the keys to sweetening with less added sugar. And what about more natural sources like honey or syrup, which is perceived to be healthier? Honey, maple syrup, date syrup, molasses, agave, all of those are added sugars, just like granulated sugar. So we need to be increasing fruits and vegetables. And the good part of those fruits and vegetables is the fiber that's packed inside. So there are a lot of misconceptions. So it's great that people are more aware of the problem, but we still need to educate and then give families you know, ways to live with less sugar in a way that's sustainable. Creating recipes that make cooking from scratch quick and easy for everyone is the end goal. Lee says that it doesn't have to be a complete lifestyle change, but it can start with something as simple as switching out your store-bought dressing for homemade. It doesn't have to be hard. You can make that creamy poppy seed dressing with pear in your blender in two minutes, and that's going to make a big impact because the dressing that you'd buy from the store, that package has 18 teaspoons of added sugar inside. So make the dressing this week. Again, two minutes in your blender. Throw the pears in with some Dijon mustard, a little bit of white wine vinegar. That thing comes together in two minutes. And it's a dressing that you can use throughout the week. So it can be used for salads, but it can also be used as a marinade, and it can be used as a dip. So you've done one thing for yourself that only takes a couple of minutes, but that serves you well throughout the week. You can still be healthy without sacrificing taste, but it's important to be selective and keep moderation in mind. Yamangil is no stranger to finding this balance. During her first pregnancy, which was full of ups and downs and hormonal changes, she gained more than 40 pounds. Toward the end, I was not immobilized, but just feeling pretty bad. And after delivery, it was kind of liberating because I didn't have to support another human <laughs> in my body. And I could go back to you know, I wasn't pregnant anymore. I didn't have the pregnant hormonal makeup anymore. So I could go back to my previous healthy eating, previous exercise routine to shed this weight that I had put on. And I think we put a lot of pressure on people, women to be a certain way. But I think sameness is very overrated. Like, we're all very different. And at the end of the day, you just want a happy and healthy mom, happy, healthy child. And there are very different ways to get to the same goal. As a new mom who was also trying to get back to her normal exercise routine and diet, Yamangil became frustrated with the lack of healthy dessert options out there. Unwilling to compromise, she started tinkering with her own low-calorie, low-sugar creations. I did lose it by sticking to my usual routine of eating as healthy as I can and basically eating sweets every day because I do not think that sweets should necessarily be not part of a healthy diet. So I was searching the internet for just healthy recipes and I'm always baking. And one time I made these banana bars, I want to say from the Well Plated blog, which is an amazing blog, totally an inspiration. And I made them and they were really healthy. They're mostly sweetened with bananas and use healthy flours, a healthy oil. So I put cocoa powder in there and they came out these wonderful brownies, moist, fudgy, just slightly cakey, but not too cakey. Like you wouldn't call them chocolate cake. They are brownies. And the cocoa powder overrides the banana taste. In my opinion, some people said that they taste a little bit banana-ish. So I made these and I posted them on Reddit and they went viral. So many people made them. One person even took this recipe on Reddit and made, I want to say, nine or ten versions of it. From this positive experience on Reddit, she decided to build on her hobby and that's how her blog was born. So my friends and family started encouraging me saying, oh, you need to start a little something, you know, you need to claim these recipes. And then I started considering taking better photos and compiling my recipes. Today, as a full-time working mom, she's a pro at creating variations of current items to make them gluten-free or vegan and also inventing fun new recipes. 
Each Sunday, she dedicates the afternoon to mixing up healthy snacks for her family in under an hour that can last throughout the week. My Sundays are taken by meal prep. I need to make lunch boxes. I need to make sure we have breakfast and lunch and dinner for the week. And if I'm going to meal prep some cookies or muffins or something like that on Sunday, I just wanted to come together in like one bowl, 30 minutes, including baking time, and then I'm done and bunch box snacks are ready. Whether you're looking for healthier options for your family, looking to shed some winter weight, or just hoping to avoid the afternoon sugar crash, everyone has a different starting point when it comes to changing habits. Cutting sugar doesn't have to mean big, restrictive cuts and pushing your sweet tooth into exile. You just have to be more mindful of what you're putting in your body. I love sweets. I think a diet doesn't necessarily just serve your body. It should also kind of serve your mind. And if I can't have a little something to look forward to during my days, it's just kind of not almost worth being fit for. And the great thing is like we don't really have to choose. We don't have to be like, oh, I'm either going to be really fit or I'm going to have desserts and not be fit. To find out more about this topic and our guests, Elif Yamangil and Jennifer Tyler Lee, visit viewpointsradio.org. You can check out Elif's online blog at plentysweet.net or view her baking Instagram account at Plenty Sweet 200. That's the numerical number 200. Also find Jennifer Tyler Lee's new book, Half the Sugar, All the Love, on Amazon or your local bookstore. Follow Viewpoints Radio on Twitter and Instagram for more behind the scenes. This segment is written and produced by Amira Zaveri. I'm Gary Price. About a million Americans have Parkinson's disease, and many are treated with levodopa carbidopa therapy, but about half of them will experience off episodes when Parkinson's disease symptoms return between doses of these medications. The FDA has approved Norian's Istradefalin, a prescription medicine used with levodopa and carbidopa to treat adults with Parkinson's disease experiencing off episodes. Dr. Robert Hauser of the University of South Florida says, During off episodes, symptoms including difficulty walking return, which can impact patients. Nurians is the first and only treatment of its kind that works differently. In clinical trials, Nurians significantly decreased the amount of off time the patients experienced and increased the amount of time patients had good symptom control between doses. Norians may cause serious side effects, including uncontrolled sudden movements, dyskinesia, hallucinations, and other symptoms of psychosis, as well as compulsive behaviors and an inability to control them. The more common side effects of Norians include uncontrolled movements, dyskinesia, dizziness, constipation, nausea, hallucinations, and problems sleeping, insomnia. If you or your family notice that you are developing any new or unusual symptoms or behaviors, talk to your health care provider. These are not all the possible side effects of Norian's. Call your doctor for medical advice about side effects. You may report side effects to FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088. Before you take Norian's, tell your health care provider about all your medical conditions, including if you have a history of dyskinesia, have reduced liver function, and smoke cigarettes or use other tobacco products. Tell your health care provider about all the medicines you take, including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, and herbal supplements. Norians may affect the way other medicines work, and other medicines may affect how Norians works. To get more information about Norians, consumers can call 1-800-N-O-U-R-I-A-N-Z or go to www.norians.com. Brought to you by Kiowa Kieran. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Viewpoints is a production of Media Tracks Communications. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Coming up on Viewpoints. This is our first in-car system that has AI processing to be able to do license plate reads right from the in-car camera. The rapidly changing realm of police technology. Then, How can we do good as well as doing well? 
the balance between revenue and being environmentally responsible. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints.